Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Tuesday morning to you all. Hope you guys are having a great start to your day and a fantastic start to your week out there so far. I got you an update on what is likely going to happen for your weather for today for most of the country. And then obviously we're going to give you a big time update on the tropics from this morning's runs and overnight runs and talk about a couple things and just give you the latest information on what it's looking like out there and just a, a good cut and dry information and try to figure out what that Invest 91L is going to do out there. And then it's looking like even behind this system that we've been talking about for what seems like forever now, it looks like the activity is still going to be ongoing. It doesn't look like this is it, but uh, we'll talk a little bit about that in this video and then more about that in tonight's video. So if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. It goes a long way and helps these videos get out there. And I really appreciate you doing that, you know, Yesterday morning's video, for example, did so much better than I ever thought it would do, you know, and it's just, it just goes to show you that you guys are tuning in and I really appreciate you guys supporting me. I really do. So um, hit me up on Twitter. It's a great way to follow along when things are much more active. Uh, for people who do, you guys know that uh, my passion kind of oozes through the platform, if you will, and I like to have a lot of fun on there and interact with everybody. So and if you guys got anything that uh, you need me to pray for or need anybody else to pray for, or just need some prayers out there then please put those uh, prayers in the comments below and it gives me an opportunity to pray over it and it gives others an opportunity to do so too. So let's get rocking this morning. Let's look at what's going on out there right now. Um, I've heard a satellite here. This is Invest 91L. Uh, there's more intense convection firing up this morning. This is a period of the day called Dernal Maximum. Obviously, we know it's the morning time. But this is called Dernal Maximum. It's basically a favored period for development. We'll talk more on what that means when the time is needed. But in general, just know that in the morning times with these tropical systems, sometimes it favors a more robust convection. And then in the evening is what we call Dernal Minimum, which uh, favors less convection. But anyways, you still got two pieces of energy, this piece of energy and this one right here. But I tell you what, both pieces are firing off convection this morning. And one of them eventually has to become dominant, but it's still an elongated, it's still very broad, and it's not put together, which, as mentioned, we kind of expected that at this point. But sometime within the next 48 hours, we expect this to look a little bit better. But if trends continue as this entire hurricane season has been, I wouldn't be surprised if 48 hours from now it still looks the exact same. But we'll continue to watch it. And then there's pieces of energy that continues to fire off North Africa, not North South America, but North Africa. We don't want to get any tongue twisters going this morning, but we'll continue. This is the latest 2 a.m. update. This might change a little bit, but I wouldn't be surprised if it stays the same. Probably one of the biggest things that's changed on here within the next five days really is uh, the fact that they finally let go of this feature up here and this feature in the Caribbean, which has no chance to develop. And they have increased the wave coming off North Africa to a 40% chance. But I will tell you, a lot of model guidance has this going out to sea. There's just a lot of weakness in the upper pattern here in the North Atlantic that is favoring recurves or fish storms or just out to sea movements. And, you know, over the last, I would say, 48 hours, 36, 48 hours, that's the same with Invest 91L. A lot of them favor a recurve, but we got to watch out for Bermuda, okay? You know, a lot of channels out there are saying Bermuda is going to get hit by a major hurricane. It's hard to sit there and say that off just a couple of model suits. Bermuda is very tiny. No offense to you guys out there, but it's a very tiny piece of land out there. And I mean, a hurricane could miss to the south or miss to the north, west, east, whatever it may be. But we need to watch because I think that this is has a chance to affect Bermuda's weather. But we got to figure out when this is going to recurve. And trends continue that this is going to recurve earlier. But Hang with me if you just want to update on the tropics. We'll talk about that in the entire later half of the, this video. But we'll keep going here in time. The Storm Prediction Center, there is a trough. that's going to be sweeping through the middle of the country today, working its way into the Ohio Valley, creating a more stable atmosphere. So you got all that crazy weather yesterday in areas of the Ohio Valley and Midwest. Much calmer day as much drier air filters in. And it'll feel a little bit like fall in certain areas. But ahead of this, you'll have big-time heating and you'll have a big line of storms, and we'll talk about that, that will sweep through uh, areas of the northeast and the mid-Atlantic and will promote a severe weather threat. Tornado threat, very low, if, if, if any threat at all. But the damaging wind threat will be there. It will be a 5% risk of damaging winds occurring in this area with just a kind of a, I wouldn't say a squall line, but just a line of strong to severe storms 
being there. Hail threat will be pretty low today. Excessive rainfall outlook, just a couple marginal risks you need to watch out for. But one area that, you know, the reason I'm showing you this, even though it doesn't look really flashy, let's watch out for southern sections of Texas today. There's a slight risk of flash flooding occurring. That is at least a 15% risk of flash flood guidance being met. And uh, these areas need the rain downer. So this is good news, but we don't want it too fast. But you areas, you know, that didn't see as much rain when portions of Texas up here in like northeast Texas near Dallas-Fort Worth, for example, saw a ton of rain uh, early last week. It looks like they got people who didn't see as much rain. We'll see a little bit more rain today. So we'll watch for that. And in fact, flood watches up for western sections of Texas. And then there's some heat advisories up for the valley areas of New York State. It'll be very warm today ahead of a cold front, but relief is coming for tomorrow. We'll talk about the dew point and the frontal passage here in a second. But weather for today here in the southeast, we'll get this going. We're still just watching this stalled front off the coast of the southeast. Therefore, pieces of energy just keep flying through. It just looked like a full-fledged tropical depression off the coast of the southeast yesterday. Um, here locally, I totally butched the forecast. I, I just wasn't expecting just a that rainy of a day. And certainly it, it was in South Carolina. Just there was a flash flood warnings going on. And yeah, it was a mess yesterday in portions of South Carolina. Nothing too crazy, but it was definitely, he had some floody conditions. But moving forward here in time, we'll watch this. We'll watch some showers along the e southeastern coastline. And we'll watch a little bit of rain, especially the western side of the peninsula of Florida into the Panhandle and Big Bend areas of Florida. But then you see this area of showers and storms strung out all the way down here. That is ahead of a frontal passage that will pass through. Some storms are possible in southern Mississippi also. Northeast, the big weather story today will be this frontal passage that will move through. And ahead of it, we'll expect some strong to severe storms. West Virginia, watch out just after lunchtime. Pittsburgh, I expect some strong storms to move through late morning, lunchtime, just after. Uh, these will move through eastern areas of Kentucky and then move into western areas of New York State. Then as we get probably into the afternoon, late afternoon hours, I would say anywhere from 3 to 5 p.m., these will be knocking on the door of eastern PA, central New York State, uh, Washington, D.C. Those will probably sweep through. Uh, whether they will be severe, not sure, but we'll find out. Uh, they will sweep through a little bit later this afternoon around dinner time, maybe even around rush hour. And these will continue and be continue to be quite intense through the evening hours. You know, we're getting into about 9 p.m. Eastern time. And these are knocking on the door of the southern New England states of Massachusetts, Rhode Island. Well, not really Rhode Island, but Connecticut. And then New York State. I mean, I'm sorry, New York City. You guys could have some, some storms that move through later this evening. I'm talking about a few hours before midnight. And these will continue to move through probably a rocky late night um, evening and uh, overnight hours for Vermont and New Hampshire as these storms move through. But behind this, dry air quickly crashes in and makes way for an excellent Wednesday. Down here in the south central U.S., we'll have a little bit of a spin, and then you'll have a ton of moisture in central Texas. We need the rain down here. This is good. It's good. You guys are still in drought conditions, but your guy guy's going to get some beneficial rains today throughout Texas, especially the entire southern half, central to southern half of Texas. We'll see some good rains today. But be careful with flash flooding, especially in this section right here, Texas. We want to watch out for this along the Texas-Mexico uh, border here. Going up to the north central U.S. for you folks in the northern plains and Midwest, um, pretty quiet. A beautiful, beautiful weather expected. The front moves through, and I'm talking phenomenal weather. It'll feel like an early fall day still temperatures will still be kind of warm it's not a very strong cold front but it will certainly feel much better when hardly any humidity if any at all and we'll see this temperatures today just in the 70s up here very nice weather very very nice weather but ahead of the ahead of the front 90s expected and impossible all the way up into southern areas of maine and then all the way down into florida and basically a whole all along the i-95 corridor can get quite warm today it's something we call compressional heating will occur ahead of this cold front and you'll have a surge of some high humidity, higher dew points. And it'll be quite uncomfortable in areas, you know, from Atlanta to Columbia, Charlotte to Raleigh, the Delmarva area up to New York City, Boston. Pretty warm today. And basically this entire cold front is draping across this area right here. So it'll be a pretty nice day in Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa. 
Michigan, very nice conditions today. It certainly will feel like an early fall day. So, And here it is. You can see it right here. Dew points. I mean, for example, if you're in Indiana, you're probably waking up to some somewhat um, high humidity, probably a humid morning. But by the time, for example, in Indiana, you get into this afternoon, humidity cuts in half. And look at this humidity by the time these dew points, I keep saying humidity, these dew points, by the time you get into this time tomorrow, you got dew points into the 50s all the way into North Carolina, all the way to the eastern shorelines of the east coast. So uh, it looks like a nice air mass moves in for at least a short period of time. So let's talk about the tropics really quick. So we'll go on and just skew ahead in time all the way up until about, uh, let's say, Thursday morning. Here's our system. Let's see what it does. The European is a little bit stronger than maybe yesterday's run, but still a pretty weak run, but a little bit more strong. It's borderline tropical storm status at this point, north, well north of Puerto Rico. This is the Bahamas. This is the Caribbean. But notice what it, what it does. We're getting into this coming Sunday morning. Um, it kind of slows down. It's a, maybe a little bit closer to um, the Bermuda. Uh, I'm sorry, to the Bermudas, uh, to the Bahamas this run than maybe it was on the run on 12z yesterday so 20 uh, so about 12 hours ago but it's still a pretty weak storm and it still recurves and then impacts that's what I'll, I'll leave it at this impacts per the european model um in about 10 days impacts bermuda is maybe a weak tropical storm at most this is one run though one run so Still favoring that recurve off the operational run. You look at the GFS. This is the hot off the press GFS, the 06Z. The GFS has this developing into a strong tropical storm as early as fr this coming Friday evening. And then it's a hurricane well, well north of the Leeward Islands in Puerto Rico, for example. By the time we get into Sunday morning, it's probably a Category 1 hurricane at this point. But you notice it starts to recurve before it even gets even close to the Bahamas. So, and if you look at the last, I would say, four runs, bang, 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 bang. And then we'll go to the previous run, bang, 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 bang. You notice it continues to trend more east and away from the homeland here in the U.S. But this is little old Bermuda right here. Watch what it does. It sad sideswipes Bermuda as a strong hurricane, probably a Category 2, Category 3 hurricane on the GFS. But if you go and you look at the European um, it's much, much slower one. And it says in 10 days around next, next Thursday evening, you might have a tropical storm knock on your doorstep. But the GFS next Tuesday morning, that's, notice that's a, that's a good two and a half, almost three day, um, difference between timing with the Euro and the GFS. The GFS likes the idea of a significant hurricane impacting Bermuda. But, you see how different these models are? And remember, Bermuda is really small. But if there's one landmass right now that we need to worry about, it certainly is Bermuda. But it's nothing to worry about necessarily, but it's it's something to be aware about. You look at the latest Euro, Pat, and, and don't focus too much on 91L at this point, but look at these pieces of energy behind it. This is that other one that has a 40% chance to develop in the next five days. We will watch that. And we'll also watch a feature up here that's been showing some love. Who knows? That might steal a name somehow, but I, I doubt it. That's probably more uh, more so extra tropical up here. But And then another wave comes off. And then there's support with this too off the ensembles. And this is as early as Sunday morning. Here comes this wave. This moves on out, but it goes out to sea also. And then another wave comes out in about nine days. And you got to watch this feature because this one is taking that really south um track and latitude here so that those are all the ones you always got to worry about but 10 days out it's right in the middle of the mdr and uh it, it's nothing really to worry about this far out but these are just a couple little things you got to worry about for sure but it really has invest 91l really slowing down we look at the latest ensembles and we'll just go on and look straight to 10 days out first off this is 91l it has almost every single one of them recurving some of them now get a little bit closer some of these runs sneak into the Bahamas as a strong hurricane, but a lot of them really slow it down right here, and then it jets out the sea. But we'll watch. One thing I, I will say, models are really finicky. You get a whole day's worth of good trends of this trending out in the sea, and then all of a sudden you'll little see little substyle uh, kind of small changes on one run that says, hey, maybe that ticked a little bit back west. 
then all of a sudden you'll get another kind of suit of, of model runs. And then all of a sudden you say, wow, that ticked a good bid west. And then all of a sudden you start a trend in the wrong direction. It, like I said, it's hard to call a day's worth of model runs a trend. You need a couple days. And we've had a couple days of, of these out the sea scenarios with 91L. So you can call this a good trend. But you still got plenty of time for this to trend back. So we got to watch, but I can tell you in the steering current, there's a wide open avenue for this to go out the sea. So you look at this first signal, a lot with this system goes out the sea, but then it shows another wave right here. Then it shows another wave right here that's pretty south in latitude here, pretty south. Um, it looks like a more southerly track is what I'm trying to say. But you look right here, this is 91L right here as early as Friday morning. Keep your eyes kind of in this area. The euro is so weak that uh, it barely shows a low pressure down here. And it shows, you know, the high pressure right here. And this is beginning to kind of carry it west-northwest, if you will. But this ridging up here to the north kind of recedes and heads back north or just breaks down in general. And then there's a wide open weakness right here for this to head on back north and then heads on back northeast. And then here it is right here. The only wild card with this, guys, is this cutoff low that is starting to show up consistently on the models. And not just the Euro, but the GFS. But the GFS has a different placement. This could pull, literally pull, this a little bit closer to the eastern U.S. But this is going to have to be much closer to this cutoff low feature. And this is just one run. This is just one operational run. For it, to, for it to really interact with it. And, and sure enough, they kind of interact with one another, but at this point, this is heading on out to sea and there's nothing you can do to stop it. So we'll watch this little feature right here. We've seen crazy things happen with cutoff lows. Cutoff lows are just crazy weather features. And sure enough, a little bit closer here, you look at this. So that's all I got, guys. Thank y'all for tuning in. I appreciate the support. We'll continue to watch this. Um, we're not done with this yet. You know, it's easy to say, okay, no threat. And it's easy to say um, we do have a threat, but you can't really say either right now. You really can't. So be careful what you watch. Be careful what you believe. But I try to keep it real for you guys on here. I really do. And if there's ever a point where you think I'm hyping things, you know, respectfully say something in the comments. And then I would love to hear your opinion on it. But, uh, you know, in my honest opinion, I think I stay pretty level-headed with this. And, uh, of course, I want y'all to watch my content. So, you know, I might make a thumbnail out there that's kind of bright, but I'm never going to see, you know, put some kind of, you know, thumbnail on there that says major hurricane going to hit the, uh, to, to potentially hit the eastern U.S. coast unless there actually is a potential for it. There's a potential for anything, right? But uh, is it a real potential, you know? So, anyways, you guys have a blessed Tuesday. I appreciate you all, and I'll talk to y'all soon.